Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about shooting FP100C film in this vintage Polaroid Big Shot camera that I got at a thrift store, and then we're going to go ahead and bleach one of our negatives so we can scan it. So for this shoot, I met up with a model named Isabel Andrea. Her Instagram is right there. And we shot in a tiny house Airbnb in Wayne, New Jersey. Space was kind of limited, being a tiny house and all, but we were able to find some really cool spots inside the house and some decent lighting where we could, as well as really interesting colors. Okay, now that we're done with the shoot, it's time to bleach and scan our FP100C negative. You can do this with stuff that you just have laying around the house, and if not, it doesn't cost much to go to the store and pick some up. I think everything I got today cost me about 10 bucks at Walmart. So the first thing is you're gonna need a piece of glass. So I just bought a picture frame, took the piece of glass out of there. You're gonna need a disposable toothbrush and you're going to need bleach. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take some scissors and just make sure you cut both sides of what I call the fishtails from either side of the film. Be very careful not to cut the actual image and follow the lines to make sure that you aren't doing so. So you want to start out with warm water and making sure that the negative and the piece of glass get a little bit wet. This way you can clean any dust or hairs or anything else the negative may have picked up while you were traveling back with it. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is attach the negative to the piece of glass by just running water over it and making sure it's staying on there. I kinda of just used my thumb to hold it. Technically you're supposed to use tape, but I'm lazy. And afterwards, once it feels like it's really on there, you're gonna to wanna to take some bleach and start pouring it on and kind of massaging it onto the negative, making sure it doesn't hit the other side. That's the reason you have the glass. If you get bleach on the other side, your image is going to be ruined. So make sure the black part is facing up when you attach it to the glass and you only put bleach on the black part of the negative. You're going to be rinsing and pouring bleach and rinsing and slowly letting it work its way through. And you're gonna be using your toothbrush to wipe away the black side of the negative until you can start seeing the image. You don't wanna overdo it with the bleach because sometimes even if it feels like you have a good grip, it can still get to the other side. So you wanna keep just pouring bleach and, and rubbing and rubbing. Don't go too hard with the toothbrush because if you do, you can actually end up scratching the image and then that defeats the purpose of doing this whole process and having a scannable negative instead of just scanning your regular Polaroid photo. Once you feel confident that you've gotten all the black goo off the back of the Polaroid, you want to rinse everything, make sure there's no bleach on anything, make sure your hands are clean when you're peeling it off so you don't get bleach on the other side, and then you take the negative off the piece of glass, hold it up to a light, and just make sure that everything's off of there, and then you can set it aside to dry. Give it about two to three hours to make sure it dries. You don't want to rush this process. If you try to take like a paper towel or even a microfiber cloth, you're going to leave little fibers and little things on the negative, which are going to show up when you scan. So I had a little bit of an issue while scanning where the image kept turning out too bright. So I tried to take a photo with my digital camera after placing the negative onto a LED light and that didn't work either, it still came out too bright. So I think this is kind of a bad example because obviously the Polaroid scan looks much better in this case, but I'll try to do this again in the future. I have done this before where it's worked out to be a much higher quality image. In my personal experience, I've only done this with FP100C, so you know, read up about it, see if the film you have is compatible with this kind of process. And that about does it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I know I said I'd be uploading a little bit more frequently and I'm trying to get started with that. Uh, if you want to see more content, subscribe or drop a like or whatever it is that people on YouTube ask people to do at the end of videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.